right, we'll do it. Do we have to come up? Good morning. Thank you all for being here this morning. My name is Sarah Goldsby. I'm the director of the Department of Alcohol and Other Drug Abuse Services. And it's with great pride that I stand here today, just a little over a year since we kicked off the Just Plain Killers campaign. And that year we've accomplished many of our goals and we're proud to have the support of our Governor Henry McMaster and many other partners, including DHEC and SLED, the DEA, all of our county alcohol and drug authorities who have supported us with this initiative. Members of the General Assembly, especially the House Opioid Abuse Prevention Study Committee, have really helped us focus on this addiction crisis. And the goal of the Just Plain Killers campaign is really to, rep, uh, to raise awareness and deepen the awareness of opioid misuse and abuse in our state. Since launching the campaign in January 2018, I can say that we are on track to accomplishing that goal. 50% of South Carolinians recognize the Just Plain Killers campaign, while 48% of South Carolinians can recall one or more messages from the campaign. Pain management is a large part of the messaging with the Just Plain Killers campaign, as well as overdose reversal. It's important that South Carolinians know that there are options when it comes to managing pain and that saving every single life is important. The vending machine next to me hands out free doses of South Carolina opioid information. After debuting at the Governor's Opioid Summit, we took it to the South Carolina State Fair, where over 445,000 individuals stopped by to get some information and to learn something about this addiction crisis. Today, the vending machine will move out to the grounds, and we are hoping and encouraging many folks will come by, uh, take a second of their day, and learn something about the opioid crisis in South Carolina. With two times more fatalities from opioid overdoses than impaired alcohol driving deaths, we all need to do our part to end the prescription opioid epidemic in our state. The Just Plain Killers campaign will continue to move forward with the support of our Governor, Henry McMaster, and I'm going to hand the microphone over to him now. Thank you, Sarah. We missed one. She's voting. She's, She's voting. voting. She's, She's coming back. She's coming back, yeah. Okay. Well, y'all, thank you. We thank all y'all for being here and for the work you're doing. This opioid uh, it, it really is a crisis. And as with a lot of other of our uh, challenges here in the state, the, the answer is generally in, in awareness. So this is an awareness campaign, and it works. The, the facts about opioid addiction and, and the results of that are, are staggering. And, uh, of course, this is not the only state that's experiencing this. But here's just a few facts for you. And there are many more facts in this vending machine, as you'll see in a few minutes. In South Carolina, we have, as you know, approximately 5 million people. Last year, there were approximately 5 million opioid prescriptions issued in South Carolina. That's one prescription of opioids for everybody in the state. And usually, uh, in uh, history shows us, the record shows us, the prescriptions have been many more than have been required. And we've developed an opioid uh, habit. And so we're, we're encouraging people to break that habit. And in fact, we had some laws passed just last year that limit the number of prescriptions, the limit the number of pills that can be in a prescription. It's limited to seven days. Also, the pres prescription tablets themselves are, are, are coded so that they can't be forged. Also, uh, parents, if they're getting opioids for their children, uh, the law requires them to be counseled on the dangers of opioid use and abuse. Uh, the number of opioid deaths in our state and as well as the country has increased for the third year in a row. In 2017, as Sarah referenced, there were 748 South Carolina residents died from opioid overdose. That's, that's more than from DUI accidents. Between 2016 and 2017, there was a 90% increase in fentanyl deaths. Fentanyl is, as you know, a man-made opi opioid. There are also natural opioids made from the poppy, as in the drugs Oxycontin and codeine. All those are, are natural, and all of them are highly addictive, and the results can be devastating. Most disturbing of all, 60% of the teenagers in our state who first try prescription drugs to get high 
60 percent of them are 15 years old or younger. So that's when this is starting. And where do they get them? Well, you can buy them on the street because uh, you could get them prescribed and then sell them on the street for a whole lot of money. But also, our own medicine cabinets are, have taken the place of many of the drug dealers. Because you have young people that will go into your medicine cabinet or the neighbor's medicine cabinet and search through and find opioids, and there you go. That is the major source of opioids that we're fighting against. So I issued an executive order placing the limits on opioid prescriptions two, a year ago. And since then, as I mentioned, we've passed laws to, to make that even more strict. But this Just Plain Killers, Just Plain Killers campaign is an awareness campaign. Because again, as we, we began, if people know what the problems are, they know what the causes are, then we can react. We can do something about it. So that's what we're here to do today. And uh, I want to congratulate and thank all of those who are standing there with us for their interest and work in this area. We're going to continue it. We want to make it stronger. And with the, with the help of, of the people of our great state, if they understand what we're dealing with, we can make great progress. So thank you. Thank Sarah? you. Yes, sir. Do you want to use the machine? Yes. Right. Might need some help. <laughs> <laughs> this says, check me now. Okay. How many opioid prescriptions are filled in South Carolina every year? Press one to find out. I pressed one. I just read that a minute ago, so I, I hope what's in here is what I said. <laughs> okay. Ouch. Wounded him. Let's open it up. All right. Let's see what you do. The opioid epidemic in South Carolina is a bitter pill to swallow. Uh -huh. Now let's see what the answer to the question is. You hold that. Hold that. This is how many opioid prescriptions are filled in South Carolina every year? There are more than 4.5 million opioid prescriptions filled in South Carolina every year. That's more than one for every person in our state. Visit JustPlainKiller.com yeah. to learn more. There you go. Wow. That's your fact right there. That's right. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. How about it? Very good. We hope go everybody ahead. visits the website, JustPlainKillers.com. Thank and you. And we have Governor. plenty of nickels right here to get you started. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, God. Thank you. 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 Sure. Sure. Great. Yeah, we're going to have it out on the grounds all day. It will be on the grounds? Yeah, they're going to move it outside. Oh. Any questions? I think it's, it is a, it's a great idea. Something like this is, uh, will catch people's attention. And we, we hope that they will go to that website and, and learn more. But this is a public awareness which is the answer to a lot of our challenges. So many folks uh, believe that prescriptions are safe, and we have to reset the social norms um, and reset people's expectations uh, that we need to be very careful about prescription drugs and only taking them as prescribed. So this is really about changing those norms. We have a lot of education to do about the safety of these drugs. And as, as Ms. Goes will tell you, a lot of the young people that they would hesitate to buy something off the street. But they'll go in that medicine cabinet because there's something prescribed by, by the doctor. And that, that it makes it, their, their entrance into this horrible world of opioid addiction a whole lot easier. So we're combating that. So just this spring, we actually had record number um, 
record-breaking number of drugs, prescription drugs, unused, returned during the DEA take, take Back Day last Saturday and to our permanent drop-off locations uh, at law enforcement agencies across the state. So between those two efforts, we've collected more unused prescription drugs just in the past few months than we have in the, in the history of the state. It's with the awareness of folks knowing to get rid of unused prescription drugs, take them to a safe location, um, and especially on that DEA Take Back Day, between those events, we collected over 11,000 pounds of unused prescription medications to be safely incinerated. So we know that the campaign is working and it's getting rid of these unused drugs. Representative Fry, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Governor, and I appreciate y'all having this press conference. I, I think it is very important that we remember that this effort is so critical to uh, the health and well-being of our state, primarily. But there was a, a, a federal study that showed that for every dollar that you invest in education and prevention, that you save seven dollars in criminal justice costs, and I think nine dollars in healthcare costs. So the cost savings from the state, the benefit to the state by campaigns such as Just Plain Killers is critically important. I think people are waking up and realizing in this state how important it is to understand the benefits of these drugs, but also how it can impact you in a negative way. Families are suffering in this state, and as we continue to move forward in a very proactive way, uh, Just Plain Killers is an excellent way that the public can get engaged and understand the risks associated with narcotics. Thank you. Uh, Russell Fry, South Carolina House of Representatives, District 106, R-U-S-S-E-L-L-F-R-Y. And I chair the Opioid Abuse Prevention Study Committee in the House of Representatives. We will talk about that a little later. Okay. It was, it was rolled out at the Governor's Opioid Summit, where we debuted it, and then we took it to the South Carolina State Fair. It was there all week, and uh, 444,000 individuals stopped by, took a look at this, got information about the issue. Today, out back, we're going to be on the State House grounds with this vending machine for the rest of the day. A lot of foot traffic with people stop by. Um, thank you for the question. I think the last couple of years, the governor has been very supportive of legislation. We passed approximately 15 bills. This year we've sent several bills over to the Senate. So a few of them are winding their way through subcommittee. Um, we're also continuing to try to work on uh, House bills to send them over there as well. But uh, we are constantly working with the help of this committee, with the help of the governor, with the help of Sarah. We are con continually trying to make sure that we are on the front end of this problem and, and, not, uh, and, and don't wake up with, with worsening conditions um, each year. Y'all thank you Excellent. very much. Governor. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Very good. Thank you.